guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale, and I've got my old friend, a proud member of Viva La Sparky. It feels like that was so long ago, man. What's up, Vulcan? Welcome back. Hey, it's going good. <laughs> and yeah, it was. It was like a year and a half ago. It was kind of crazy. I, I know. This. I can't believe we're going into year four of Clash Royale. It's. It doesn't feel like that long, but in a sense, like especially when you think of those live events, like heck, Helsinki tournament was like three years ago. That's crazy. But anyway, enough reminiscing. How you been, dude? Are you uh, excited for CRL 2019? Yeah, I'm. I'm very excited. I'm just waiting for it to be announced and stuff. But <laughs> I know, right? I'm ready. Like, so <laughs> get on that. Give us some info, please. You know. Uh, so anyway, I'm excited too, but yeah, I'm kind of like, okay, are you, are you going to be with TSM in, in 2019 CRL or do you not know yet? Or I know everything's up in the air at this point, kind of. Yeah, I really don't know yet. I mean, a lot of teams, like my contract with them has ended and a lot of okay. teams like want me on their team. So for Obviously, me, it's just going right? to be deciding what's the best team, what's the best match for me. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's like who has the, 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 the dopest uh, team house, right? That's what you really care about. right? Oh yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but any team obviously would be incredibly lucky to have you. Uh, do you feel like just, I, I, this is the deck by the way that we're going to cover today, guys, I'll put a timestamp on when the match go, when we start the first match going to be live ladder uh, today. Uh, but do you feel like your skill wise, if you had to give yourself a, se a self assessment, cause I feel like you just from Kings cup to to CRL season one, you took such an amazing step as one of the top players in the game. Do you feel like there's more room for you to even grow on top of where you are now? Or do you feel like, okay, you know, I put in a lot of time, I'm at my skill cap, you know? Um, that's an interesting question. And I think <laughs> I definitely am at like the best I've ever been. I think if you, if you looked at me last year, I was like, I wouldn't put myself anywhere near where I am right now. I knew, like last year I only knew like three decks. Now I know like 10 different like variants. Wow. Um, I think that there, there's a lot of decks that I have mastered, but there's a couple like Lava Hound, Three Musketeers and like stuff. It's like stuff like that is like in the past I've mastered versions of them, mm -hmm. but every meta new versions come out. So you kind of have to remaster the decks. I got so you. I would say yes in the sense I have mastered metas, but every meta you just kind of have to remaster the meta. I so, get you. Yeah. That's kind of how it works. What do you think is your weakest archetype overall out of everything? I mean, is there is there, I don't yeah, even is know there if one my weakest, but like Lava Hound Miner, I just don't I just don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> like okay. I, I just I like Lava Loon and you might even see me play Lava Hound Miner sometimes just to like if I'm in a competitive match just to hard counter someone. Mm -hmm. But I would say it's a deck that I'm really not a big fan of. Okay, well, so the deck that you are a big fan of is the one that we're going to be talking about today. And it's your version of Miner. It's pretty free-to-play friendly. Of course, it does have Miner in the, the Mortar deck. Uh, but, it, it, you know, other than that, just one Epic card is pretty easy to level up. And it's really good for Ladder. Why do you like this version of, uh, of Mortar uh, Bait, I guess, uh, so much? Well, in particular, I think that this version is good because this actually should be able to counter um, balloon decks and it might have a little bit of a rougher time against decks like Royal Giant, but you can still um, outplay them. One thing about Mortar you're gonna see is like, you can pretty much outplay any matchup, especially with all the crazy new Dark Goblin variants and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's just really um, versatile and since there's like, isn't Magic Archer in the meta, you don't necessarily need like Fireball. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you don't have a big spell at all here. No, no. All you have actually, you don't have no. You don't have a small spell other than Barbaro. So should be interesting to see like how you negotiate that. But you have plenty of swarm cards, obviously, as well. So let's go ahead and stop talking and hop into a match here. You're pretty high on ladder right now. You're currently 130 in the world. So why don't we go ahead and hop in and we'll see you guys when we find a match. And before we get into the action, guys, just wanted to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor. It is Joy City Corp. They are launching a brand new M. MMORPG, which, oh my god, is my jam, my go-to. A lot of you know, that's how I started gaming way back in the late 90s with EverQuest. Now they have a new title launching called The War of Genesis Battle of Antaria on mobile. So what is this game? Well, like I said, it is a strategy MMORPG. This is a very polished game, guys. It features 
more than 80 unique heroes with new heroes added every month. There's a loads of real-time PvP in the overworld, and then there's a fully fleshed out story mode, including 75 tough levels in hard mode. They have guild versus guild combat, and you can even customize your own storylines, including custom cutscenes. I'd highly recommend you guys try out this new game that launched today. Check out- Here we go, guys. Oh, Metal Bond. This guy is used to be well known for Giant. But giant, right? Yeah, yeah, Giant Triple I'm Spell. I'm guessing he's not playing Giant. If he is, that's going to really suck. <laughs> yeah, right? So I guess that, like, when you talk about the worst matchups for this deck, do you think it is? Ooh, okay, so Bowler is not too bad. That's not good. as bad. Yeah, this is probably a good matchup, actually. And you sneak that Dark Goblin in there just so it can kill that Bowler and stay alive, hopefully. Yep. Okay, and there you use that. So now I can go in with um, a Minor Goblin game because he has no... Login cycle. Mm -hmm. And one important thing here is that I'm always going to be playing my miner in that position because he has tornado and I don't want him to activate his king tower. Good call. And he graveyards immediately, so graveyard freeze here. Yep. Honestly, mm, that might have been a tiny mistake, but it shouldn't cost me anything. Yeah, he uses that NATO. I'm not sure. You know, he does do a lot of damage though, so I guess you can't really complain about it at the end of the day. And then you mortar immediately. Yeah, I did it because I didn't want him to have enough elixir for bowler. Gotcha. Like, he is one card away from it still. So. Yeah. You do such a good job at, at, at like, really... It's, it's one thing to count elixir. It's another thing to count elixir and put the pressure when you know they have, okay, only two elixir short of what they need to play their counter or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to ask you... Vulcan, a little bit about like lane strategy with this deck, meaning that like how do you choose your lane? You're going against Graveyard right now, you've been going same lane. Uh, how do you choose to, to switch lanes or, or to do it different or to do it differently? Um, usually you switch lanes uh, when they cycle a card in the back of the tower because you don't want them to be able to build up a push in the same lane that you're doing. And also, I don't want to be attacking the same lane as Sam because he's a Graveyard player. Okay, so I'm gonna switch lanes to Mortar right here. Okay. The only problem is that he has Bowler in Cycle. Okay, that's actually good for me that he did that. Mm -hmm. So he goes in with a huge Elixir push. You're just going to Bar Barrel and Dark Goblin. That's fine. And, exactly. And he switched lanes there. Just going back to the point we were making, guys. You, you saw Vulcan switch lanes there. That was a nice uh, addition with those bats there to take care of that E uh, Wiz. But he switched lanes there because, again, against a graveyard player, he's going to kind of pick and choose his spots. Doesn't want them to, even if he had dropped a bowler in the back on the right lane, he would have switched to the left lane. So here we go. Yeah, and you always want to, the, the main thing is just keeping the mortar in the opposite lane. It's not even necessarily the, the other troops. Mm -hmm. He might tornado that, but that's fine by me. Yep, he opts not to. Instead, he's going to try to go in with a big, potentially lethal push here. He plays that uh, that minion horde right into the baby dragon. Just needs to stop the uh, the troops coming down the lane. So he takes a decent amount of damage there, and then Bowler's back in hand. So he's going to send in Miner, and again, a bunch of Swarm getting ready for that E-Wiz. This time, he delays on the E-Wiz. Smart move on his part. Yep, this is going to be a close match for sure. Mm -hmm. So we're 20, almost 20, almost 30 seconds into Sudden Death Overtime here. It's just these decks can be so annoying because of how huge of a push they can pull off. And here he goes, left lane. Minion Horde again, adeptly played at the bridge there. Freeze comes down, he has Bar Barrel in hand. I don't like that Freeze on his part. And he missed the, uh, the Dark Goblin, so potentially an opening here. For Vulcan, he's putting on so much pressure here in the left lane. Oh, is he gonna? I don't think he has enough elixir for you, Wiz. Yeah, that's, oh, a, that's a win. Oh, the double dark goblin! <laughs> wow, GG's man, that was crazy. And 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 uh, Metal Bond is really really good with his deck too. Mhm. Mm Just that last freeze. Do you think that was what what cost him the game? Like the overcommitment there? Yeah, I, I don't think he should have switched lanes to that. Well, honestly, I mean, I kind of had the counter in that scenario, so he actually did play it pretty well but yeah yeah right, i think well, that was a little bit of a mistake well let's hop into match number two and see if we can keep this we'll see if we can make this a win streak i should say here we go next match that was pretty fast and uh hey it's the beginning of the match i'm gonna serve up some hot pancakes and uh while i do so 
Can you uh, talk a little bit about first place? Are you ever going to open up with a, with a mortar in this deck? Yeah, the, the best two first plays of this deck are going to be um, mortar at the bridge is the best play, and then second best play is just going to be a minor. Because okay. with this deck, you always want to be keeping up the pressure. Okay. I'm just curious too. Like I know you're not, you know, known as a hog player, but you're so versatile. But are, do you? What's your play? What's your like philosophy on first plays in general? Like if you're playing a hog deck, uh, are you starting out with a hog as well? Yeah, you're all, you're always starting out with a hog first play, and that's something I learned from Firewolf. Um, there's only like one, like there's a couple cases where if you're using like a a hog deck with baits in it, sometimes you want to split troops in the back before you hog. Okay. Um, but. If you're playing just like a hog cycle deck, you should be playing hog first play. And you said uh, that our only problem might be Royal Giant, and here we go. <laughs> so, does this yeah. really come down to, well, his big spell is obviously either Fireball or Lightning. So, this could be trouble. So, what is your strategy going to be against this matchup? Well, it, it is a little bit harder because I don't have Prince. If I had Prince, I counter. My strategy yes. is just going to be... Um, Muting, <laughs> muting this guy first off. Yeah, well, is he muted? I don't. I'm not even noticing. I mean, I, what I need to do right now is just cycle back to mortar. Yeah. He doesn't have tornado, so that's good to keep in mind. I'll play that low. Um. Oh wow. There's a lightning. Ooh, that's gonna be a pain. So now you have to be like super. Are you gonna change your mortar placement now because of the lightning, or? No. Okay. I'm not because. He's lightning is six elixir and mortar's four elixir, so I'm totally fine with him using a lightning on it. Okay. I think this is actually not that bad of a matchup. I know when I used to play Royal Giant, I would frequently lose to this mortar deck. Okay. A man of honesty and integrity. Here we <laughs> go. <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes it's easy to be like, they have matchup every single match, you know? Yeah, for sure. If I had Prince, though, it's like, um, Wait, super hard counter. Yeah. And why do you prefer Rascals to Prince, then? Uh, obviously, you must prefer Rascals in, in most other matchups. Um, just because I, well, it's just really not a reason. Cool. Both of them, <laughs> both of them work. That's the thing. That's the I thing about you. Mortar. Like, so many versions work. Yeah. It just comes down to personal preference, ultimately, it sounds like. Exactly. So this time he uses his lightning again, but he only gets one Royal Giant shot. But at this point, all the furnaces are adding up. You do a good job with that miner pulling that furnace back. But between furnaces and bar barrels, you decide to go all in in the left, knowing he has lightning, Royal Giant, Baby Dragon in hand. Yeah, I'm kind of losing this tower race right now. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of. we gotta, we got to make something happen. Yeah. And another furnace, which is annoying. So a defensive mortar. Minion horde. He lightnings. This could be this could be an opportunity for you here. Yep. Might. Oh, oh, come on, come on, get to that tower. Bats, minions on the tower. Miner on the tower. Wow. <laughs> there we go. We got it. I was definitely at the start of the game. I was playing that a little bit too slow. Okay. Um, okay. I should have been pressuring the opposite lane a lot more than I was doing. Wow, with, dude, that with the was bats. insane, though. That was insane. Okay, so uh, go ahead and search for your next match, but as we do, uh, we might have to edit out again, but as we do, talk a little bit more about the the decision on the support troops, because, like, let's face it, Mortar Bait is a thing, is, is a really strong archetype, but then you have Mortar Bait with Miner, Mortar Bait with Hog, Mortar Bait with Prince and Miner, Mortar Bait with Rascals and Miner. Maybe just kind of give, like, you don't have to go into, into super detail, but, like, in your mind... What are the strengths and weaknesses of, of those different kind of configurations? Obviously, you prefer this one. Um, okay, so if you're going against a lot of Bowler or, like, Beatdown, um, you want to use Prince because Bowler doesn't knock back Prince. And then Prince is really good versus, like, Giant decks and Golem decks and stuff like that. But if you're versing a lot of, like, uh, I don't know, Hog. Actually, Prince is pretty good versus Hog, too. But yeah. if you're versing a lot of like Lava Hound and like Air Decks, you want to have, you know, like the Rascals and the Minion Horde in there. Um, it's really good against Balloon Decks that uh, you don't need Prince for. Okay. So it's kind of like Beatdown, you. you bring Prince. If you're not versus Beatdown, you don't really need Prince necessarily. And do you feel like uh, Mortar Miner is just in a better spot 
uh, overall than Mortar Hog right now? Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. so. All I right, mean, well, you see yeah. Macarius pushing with it, but it's not the best. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like Macarius, and then that's about it. But you see a lot of people having success with the Mortar Minor combos. So anyway, we'll go ahead and edit out and come out to you guys in match number three. Here we go. All right, against Masik Star. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that either. All right, we'll give him the nod. What's your favorite emote, Vulcan? Uh, my favorite emote is probably this one or this one. I like to do a little combination of both. <laughs> a little, a little one-two combo, a little pro pro emote tips. Exactly. So this looks like another Mortar Mirror match. Yep. Wow. Okay. So, Mortar versus Mortar. What is your strategy going to be on a Mirror match? Well. Um, do you want to be the, the yeah? Go ahead. Sorry. Usually, you want to be the second one to drop okay, the mortar. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah, there, it's not like gonna lose you the game necessarily. There's like, it's a lot about it's kind of a, about mind games. Okay. Yeah, because we'll I see. always, I always feel almost hesitant. Like, are you not even gonna play some mortar at this point until he does and just use your miner? Okay, no, so I think I will. I've I've watched a lot of like matches from Midfinger, mm -hmm. and he does he will like plays more on offense. So okay. I think so, it is a good idea. So he has Prince. You have Rascals. Who do you think has matchup there, or is it just totally doesn't matter? Doesn't really matter that much. Honestly, I don't, I don't think matchup. it matters that much. Yeah, I don't think so either. So getting a little bit more chip damage, which is actually really beneficial. Taking all the way down to 22-14. Now, does your play style change if you're in the lead against a match, uh, another like mirror deck like this, or not really? Um, not. I mean, it's more like if you're losing, you might play more aggressive. I got you. I got if, you. If you're leading, usually you want to just keep playing safe. Yep. Dark Goblin cleans up nicely. Really, the trick is always that. You wanna anytime you have like counter pushing spam troops, you always just wanna be adding your minor like okay. on that offense. And then the risk is, and I guess a, a big mistake would be sending in your minor uh when you have no for no reason, when you have no surviving troops or whatever. Unless it's like a stale point in the match or something. Well, it, actually if you have like the firewall version, I would say that's fine, but with this version, probably not. Okay. He, he, actually he does have zap, so I'll go with the rascals because it's gonna no, he didn't zap. But that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so I wonder if this guy has uh like fireball or rocket or something as his last spell. Yeah, I'm not sure. The only thing here is that I don't have a big spell, so it might be hard for me to like actually finish off the game if he starts predicting all my miners. That's true. That's true. So he fireballs there, which is I don't know, not too bad for you because you keep a couple spirit goblins alive, now you play rascals. Mortar is such an annoyance to the Rascals, though. It's going to clean up all your spam here. Actually, though, you're right. You did Fireball, so I'm going aggressive. And you guys can see just the pressure that Vulcan's putting right now on that left tower. Just not giving him enough time to build, like, a huge push behind his... Oh, here it goes. I guess this is his version of the big push. Rascals there at the last second. Nice play. Yep. Oof, this is a tough one, man. This is close. Every time he comes at you with that charging prince and the motor and the bats and stuff, I'm like, oh crap, this is it. <laughs> Dark Goblin value. Bar Barrel value. And Rascals are there again to save you. Oof. It's a defensive mortar, maybe. Yep, there it is. I keep playing my miner in the same spot, but he hasn't been predicting it, so I'm just going <laughs> to keep playing it there. going for it, right? <laughs> I guess exactly. that would be the exception to the rule of always switch up your miner if they if you're always playing at the same spot and they never guess it. It's yep. kind of like one of those things, like you said, mind games, right? It's like they're probably thinking like he's not gonna go again in the same spot, right? Exactly. As soon as ah! he uses that, oh <laughs> he wow, switches it. he switches it and he finally gets that spot. There you go. Okay, well, opposite lane mortar here. Uh, oh, bar barrel goes down. Fireball comes down. Now you okay, can play a minion horde. that means I can go with minion horde. Yep. And he knows you're going to go minion horde here, so this is going to be like a big push. Minion horde, miner, 
Let's see if I can get him. That might get. That's it. That's it. Boom. There we go. GG. GG, man. Hey, well played, brother. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. I've been getting a lot of requests, both for you and for a mortar deck. I saw that you uploaded yesterday. Are you, like, what's what's going on in the YouTube channel? Anything that we should be aware of on the horizon or just trying to stay active and, and whatnot? Yes, uh, I definitely, man, I, I struggle with, like, getting the motivation to make videos. But, like, I've kind of taken a look. I, at first, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make them for a while. But I've kind of taken a look at it, and I'm like, you know what? I think it is the right thing to do, so I'm not just wasting my time all day watching netflix and youtube <laughs> so yeah so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna start making videos um and i have i've written out like uh, a bunch of tips for 2.6 and a bunch of tips for 2.9 because people always comment on my old videos that i made of it and are always like oh you should make another video so i'm gonna hey, make nice. those videos i talked to like some pros and i've been watching jack and air surfer play so i kind of have some really solid things that like they do that um, I want to share on my channel. I just have to I wrote the tips I just have to like speak them and record it. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's the that's the hard part But it actually you have the hard parts done you have it all written down So that's good man I advise all my, my all my viewers of course to check out Vulcan's YouTube channel subscribe to him guys turn on the notification bell Especially if you want those 2.6 and 2.9 kind of strategy guides for the 2019 meta So Vulcan thanks again for coming on man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me Ash. No problem. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Check out Vulcan's player stats, profile, YouTube channel. Everything that you guys need will be in the show notes below. Huge shout out to Brent Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys.